Hello and welcome to another edition of Diaspora Network, the show that celebrates Nigerians who are excelling in the diaspora in different fields. On the show today, we tell you the compelling stories of the men and women who are handling finance around the world in different currencies. Catch up with a seaman who has been awarded for managing the US Navy's largest cash disbursement and that involved $45 million. We talk about the virtues of dignity and integrity on our special reports. And of course, the unique story of a banker turned cab driver who found and returned 100,000 dirham in the United Arab Emirates. There's plenty to show you on this week's episode. But first of all, let's take a look at the news of the week. With Nigerian lawmakers confirming their commitment to making it possible for Nigerians abroad to vote in future elections, there are no surprises that senior community leaders residing outside the country have entered the race to become president in next year's ballot. It is well noted that the diaspora remit more money home than Nigerians earn from crude oil sales, but beyond remittances, professionals are keen to engage in policy discourse to tackle insecurity, poverty and unemployment. Dr. Philip Adiawar, a pathologist working at Basildon and Thurrock University Hospital, is one such individual. Like other countries that, has, that have struggled to break out of underdevelopment, Nigeria needs her diaspora to participate actively in her political process. Indeed, I use the word liberation, political liberation or political redemption. I have given the example in time past of countries such as Rwanda or countries such as India or countries, uh, countries like such as China. Without the diaspora population of these three countries I've mentioned, they will not be where they are today. Austin Chenge, a Michigan businessman who is the first Republican to announce his intention to challenge the popular Democrat Gretchen Wichmer for the office of governor, has caused a firestorm on social media after announcing on his Instagram page that, if elected, he will cancel Black History Month in the Great Lakes state. It's offensive, unfair, maybe illegal, he wrote, adding, Americans from all backgrounds deserve a revered history. I'll declare American History Month. Chenge is a U.S. Army veteran of Nigerian descent who studied law at Cambridge in the United Kingdom. This isn't the first time the 35-year-old social media comments have landed him in hot water. He also seemingly defended the protesters who stormed the U.S. Capitol building, saying some of them were overcome by passion, more passion than others, and may have acted in a way that they didn't intend to when they were there. The election will hold in November. Nigeria's journey at the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing, China, has come to an end after the country's sole participant, 30-year-old French-Nigerian skier Samuel Ikpefan, finished in 73rd position out of 88 participants in the men's sprint-free category. Despite the disappointment, Ikpefan's appearance was a history-making one, being the only athlete from Africa to compete in cross-crunchy skiing at this year's Olympic Winter Games. Ikpefan was raised in the French Alps, and chose to compete for his father's country to make history not only for Nigeria, but for the entire continent. The Nigerian Olympic Committee have vowed to work with the athlete to improve his performance during the next Winter Games. Juliana Olayinka with the Diaspora Network News Wrap in London. Nigerians are known for their industry wherever they work. But when it comes to handling public funds, there's often negative profiling of Nigerians. Well, we found some of Nigeria's most influential trailblazers who have been honored for 100% accountability. Lieutenant Victor Agumbiade was born and bred in the southwestern part of Nigeria, where he had his primary and secondary education. He went on to get a bachelor's degree in agricultural economics and after consistently trying, he achieved his lifelong dream of relocating to the United States in 2007. A year after he arrived in the US, he joined the United States Navy where he started as a storekeeper and in 2013, he was commissioned as an officer. One of the biggest challenges there when I went for my first training was, you know, in the Navy, uh, you have to do what they call the third class swim call, which means you have to be able to swim 50 yards and then you have to be able to jump 13 feet deep into the pool and you have to you have to float for five minutes 
And I know from coming from Nigeria, I wasn't used to swimming. And that was my, one of my biggest challenges. Like many other Nigerians in the diaspora who have stood out for their outstanding character, despite the negative profiling caused by a few bad eggs, Lieutenant Agumbiade distinguished himself in his career and gained special recognition in different areas. The most recent being an award by the Navy and Marine Corps Development Medal for his exemplary leadership and high standards of character and conduct in managing the U.S. Navy's largest overseas cash disbursement office that involved a whopping $45 million. He demonstrated impeccable accountability and honesty that survived the scrutiny of six rigorous inspections and independent audits with zero discrepancies. Lieutenant Agubiade attributes all of this to a good upbringing and dedication to duty. You know, a lot of issues we have today is because of the family values. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of kids now, a lot of youth, uh, they didn't grow up the way we, we grew up then with family va values. You know, we sit down every night, talk to our parents, they tell us, they tell us stories. But one thing I do know is that as a young boy, my, you know, my mother used to say something that was very profound in my native language. You know, my mother was a, Euro, a Jebu ma, a woman. She, she used to say in the Jebu language that, which means I will not take somebody else to add to my home. So you grew up with that, kind of, with that kind of parents. And you know, my dad, you know, I learned something in him. What I learned in my dad was integrity. You know, if you ask him to keep $10 for you, and uh, you come back in 10 years, he will give you the exact $10 you gave to him. And sometimes I used to question him, why didn't you spend it? I mean, you spend it, we're hungry, but you can spend that and then replace it back. But my father said, no, the person entrusted, it's a secret trust, it's a secret honor for someone to entrust his value or his property into your hand. And you have, a, you have a duty to protect it and preserve it. For the US Navy to entrust such huge amount of cash, I mean, Cash, cash money into my, into my, into my, into my care, to me it was like a sacred trust, in which I knew that uh, number one, I'm responsible to God to make sure I uphold that integrity and trust, and also to be able to remember. You know, my father always tell me, as a young boy, even when I was in college back in the university days in Nigeria, every time he write, he, he wrote a letter to me, he would tell me, always remember the son of whom you are. He also believes integrity and contentment, contrary to popular opinion, still pays and goes a long way in service to humanity. If somebody entrusts 24, 24 million dollars into my, into my care, I don't need 24 million dollars to live a comfortable life. It's just greed and it's just a lot of people, you know, they said that godliness with contentment is a, it is a great gain. So my advice for them is, you know, you see those, when they entrust public funds into your hands, I mean, use it for what it's meant for because it's a, it's a sacred trust. You know, you look at Nigeria today, we have over, if I'm, my statistics is right, we have over 200 million uh, Nigerians. And if, if you are privileged, because you, you have to understand that when, when they entrust public fund into your hand, it's a privilege, it's a calling, it's an office. So the same way, if, when they, whether it is money or any task or any job, you know, Anything they ask you to do, you, 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 you count it as a privilege. Number one, it's your service to people. And number two, always remember that what you do, people are going to talk about what you do tomorrow. Lieutenant Agubiade is the first member of his family to serve in the military and hopes that his children consider service at the U.S. Navy, as he believes its requirement for discipline contributed to his irreproachable character. Personally, I want all my kids to serve in the military. I mean, I don't, I don't expect it. I don't expect them to make it a career, but I want them to serve in the Navy. Uh, and I've said that before for three reasons. Uh, number is number one, I want them to serve in the U.S. Navy because uh, this uniform I wear today changed my life, changed the, changed the paradigm of my, of my story. This uniform is what God used to take me to a place where I am now that I never imagined I would be. So I want them to be able to give back to the, to the country who opened our hands to receive me when I came as an immigrant. And I want them to serve for that, to be able to give back, back to the country, back to the society, so that they understand what service is all about. Apart from service to humanity and doing Nigeria proud, Lieutenant Agumbiade is also passionate about sports, and this is because sports to him is, amongst other things, a unifier. Sports teaches you discipline, because it takes a lot of punishment to be able to get to you look at all these great athletes, they train day and night. So they have to discipline their body. Sport tells them what they can eat, what they cannot eat. So when you do sport, it also helps you with your mind. Because sport 
help you to, you know, it helps you to develop your mental faculty. He commends the federal government through the Nigerians and Diaspora Commission for its active policies, projects and participation in catering to Nigerians in the diaspora and seeks more commitments to boosting direct diaspora investments which will in return be beneficial to all. A lot of Nigerians that I know here, they actually want to come back home and invest. But we have, the, we have challenges in Nigeria and I've taken time to talk to a lot of people. But it's very difficult for people to invest their money when there is no security of lives and property. It's also very difficult for people to invest their money when the infrastructural, infrastructural facilities are not there. And it's very difficult for people to invest their money when uh, we don't have power stability. So those are three main things that I would advise uh, you know, uh, the government to actually critically look into. Lieutenant Tagumbi Ade is also passionate about his humanitarian project in his home state in Nigeria. Now that is really impressive and many want to see an end to the negative profiling of Nigerians caused by just a few bad eggs. Take a look at what else we found regarding Nigerians and the judicious management of funds. From Nigeria to Japan, the United States to the UAE, and from the UK to Australia, Nigerians who exhibit outstanding acts of honesty are singled out for celebration and rewards. Despite the negative image the country has acquired as a result of the wrong choices of some compatriots in politics, business and other spheres of life, many Nigerians have managed their positions of responsibility without any taint and they continue to balance out the narrative in favor of the average Nigerian who believes that honesty still pays even if not by cash. In November 2021, President Muhammadu Buhari honored three Nigerians for exhibiting exemplary acts of honesty and integrity, one of whom is Ike Nangweke, a PhD student from Imo State studying in Japan. He found a wallet containing a large sum of money and other valuables and returned them to the Japanese police. And he also turned down the offer of 10% of the money he found as a reward. In December of the same year, 28-year-old Abidin Olashupo was rewarded with an award of integrity for returning the sum of $2,397 that was mistakenly paid into his account by a foreign organization that he consulted for. In faraway Russia, Sandra Asumba went to an ATM to cash some money when she discovered that the malfunctioning machine had ejected an undisclosed sum of money. She reported this development to the bank and was rewarded by her university for her honesty, civic consciousness, nobility and dedication. These represent just a small number of the many Nigerians in the diaspora doing the country proud by displaying traditional Nigerian values of honesty and integrity. Citizens are not the only ones putting their best foot forward as activists, non-governmental organizations and civil society organizations also play fundamental roles in aid and development, encouraging transparency, accountability, participation and inclusion, which are undeniable tools that can be used by the public to keep government dealings in check. And on the part of government, efforts are made through its anti-corruption fight which has led to many arrests and persecutions so far. Corruption remains one of the most pervasive and doubting challenges facing humanity. It deprives national government of resources needed for sustainable development and facilitate illicit financial flows from developing economies to developed countries, thus weakening state stability to deliver developmental expectations targeted at women and youth. These incredible stories are perhaps a reminder that although honesty may not always go about announcing its presence, it's still one of the hallmarks of the Nigerian character and has a positive impact on the image of the country. Coming up on Diaspora Network, our interview with Abraham Eiferer. He found and returned 100,000 dirham in the United Arab Emirates. It's quite a story after the break. Welcome back to the program. 
we crossed the African continent to Dubai in Asia and then back again to Edo State, Nigeria, all to bring you the story of Abraham Ifeha. He had a good degree and a strong banking background, but he left the shores of Nigeria after losing his job. Born in Onwa West local government area of Edo State, Nigeria, Abraham Ifaha arrived in the United Arab Emirates, filled with hope and aspiration for a better life. The end game was to end up in the banking sector, but Abraham took to driving with the company Sharjah Taxi to survive in the short term while waiting to make it big long term. But he was dealt with a heavy blow, even as he tried to carry out that plan. On the first day of my arrival, Terminal 2, precisely Dubai, I was picked up by a friend to my accommodation. I was very, it was, I was optimistic that, yeah, everything will be fine. Everything will, everything will be fine, fine, fine. The office, that was on Sunday precisely, it was on Sunday. I went to the office immediately and I was located in a room. Following day, I went back to the same office to check my, to officially give them my passport and all that documentation. I would discover that no money had been paid, my license fee, none had been paid. And I gave my friend 8,500 dirham. It was like 850,000 in Nigeria currency. No one was paid. And the company said, I cannot proceed with my driver license because you pay your license yourself without paying anything. The person who gave the money to him, it was taking us here. We took the money to the police, actually. The police said the, the transaction was done in Nigeria, so nothing could be done about it. Till today, that money was gone. It was, going. it was a very bitter experience. Confused, bewildered and almost broke, Abraham tells us he fell back on two things, his faith in God and determination to feed his family. Then one day he found 100,000 dirham in his taxi. A week before that, in my church, the local church here in the UAE, my pastor told me, I said, I see your, I see being wealthy, like he said it, like he brought me out in the church, like he prayed, and like, I see being wealthy, stuff like that. On to on <laughs> Wednesday of it, behold, money in my car, forgotten by a customer, whom I dropped. And opened it, I just opened, that was on the 8th of December, around 5 p.m. Picked him up, dropped him, I took a U-turn, so 100, 100 meters after, I picked another customer going to another destination. Then I found a little bag, my back of, the back of my seat. I opened it and I saw an envelope, envelope again. I opened the envelope again. I saw two packs of 500 around, 100 pieces, 100 pieces, 200 pieces altogether. That was 100,000. Ironically, he wondered if the money he found was the breakthrough the family so desperately needed. I said, I can't give him back the money. That's not your money. I never thought it twice. I never like I didn't try to fight the minds. Like the first that I talked to was my wife. I just said, babe, see you. He said, look for the customer and give her give him the money back. That phone call he made to his wife led us to seek out this woman who put the virtue of honesty before wealth. Our cameras traveled from Dubai in Asia back to Edo State in the south of Nigeria where we found the modest home of the Ifahas. Mrs. Joy Ifaha lets us into the story of what life has been like since Abraham left for the UAE. So, we got married April 7th, 2020. He left the country 2019, December 10th, precisely. Wow, it has not been easy. So, we're managing. Thank God for the GSM. That's what we're visiting to communicate. So, we communicate daily at interval. Mrs. Ifaha says Abraham would never do anything illegal to get ahead, and this point is reiterated by his older brother, Abe. He has fond memories of their mother and her counsel to them to be honest. He tells Abraham not to be distracted 
and to ignore those who mock him for returning the money. Remember what our mom used to tell us, don't take what does not belong to you, take by it. And have it in mind, one day, honesty will pay. It's always pay. For those who are discouraging him, where? Well, let them be. You're a man, because I do call you my boy. My boy, always do the needful. If you, if you just don't, 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 uh, 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 those ones are telling you that, 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 uh, 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 the money, you have, you have taken the money. No, no, it's to them. You're, you're a man of yourself. Always be doing good and make us proud. Abraham has a reply for skeptics and those who say he returned the money because he knows his company could have installed hidden cameras in the taxi. Look, there's no camera in the car. If, if Paraventure wants to be taken off, it's always between me and God. Yeah, there was no tricks. But just, we, I don't, I'm not, I'm, it doesn't, I can't think, I, I can't, I can like, I, don't, I see it as uh, stealing, big one. Big one, big stealing. And I get the money back and I told him be careful next time. And then what has happened since that day? So I wrote to the following, following day, called my office. Look at what happened between your driver and the customer. Office called me again. What happened between you and the customer? I explained everything. Like, you saw 100,000 and you turned to the customer. I said, of oh, course, boss. Is it my money? It's not my money. Well, like, thank you. I said, okay, God bless you. And I left, continue my work again. On the 14th of December, they called me and gave me a certificate of honesty and a 500 dirham award. 500. Let me let me call the amount. <laughs> Is this truth? I went back to my duty post as usual, but it has not been easy with insult. I've been insulted. I've not even this. It has been you no. Know, sometimes I I pick some customers. I was like, yes, guy, how are you? Is it fine? You're in Nigeria, yeah. How you see this funny guy that returned the 100,000? So I'm saying that guy is a fool. So I have been humiliated a lot. Only yeah. well, few will say, you did well. Only few will say you did well. But a lot of people criticize. I was like, what has been, been uh, honest become a crime? We asked Mrs. Ifaha what she desires for the family now that her husband has received such recognition. My greatest wish is for him to have a better opportunity and a better job over there because that Tazi job is so, so stressful. My husband, I know no company or anything, that assignment that has been given to, that will not be able to deliver well. He works hard, he's diligent in his working, and he's very truthful. And for Abraham? What would you like? Chinese woman, you asked me a very funny question though. You know what I want? You know what I would love to have? Money too. <laughs> There's so many people who leave Nigeria seeking greener pastures but end up in crime, you know, end up, despite the fact that they have difficult situations, right? They use that as, a, as an excuse to perpetrate crime and even um, tarnish the image of the country. In the UAE, for instance, we know that there's some Nigerians who are not representing the country well. You know, how, what would you like to tell such people? One thing that I know, upbringing matters a lot. And upbringing, yeah, your, your group, your, your association matters a lot. Who influences you, who do you listen to? Matters a lot. Well, let's say, well, let's say, my background as a banker, or well, let's say, well, my upbringing actually. We grew up like, you know, be contented with what we have. This is the same message that rings on the lips of the Aifaha's seven year old son. He tells us boldly what his father has taught him. I am proud of my daddy, and I believe that the Nigerians are going to learn from what he has done. Abraham encourages others to demonstrate the core values of honesty, integrity and patriotism, even if they're not celebrated, for demonstrating this sterling disposition in the workplace. What a story of faith, resilience, duty and honesty. The reality is that while graft is still a problem in our society, 
there are millions of Nigerians out there who are not being rewarded, they're not being celebrated, but they still show the virtue of honesty in the little things that they do every day. That's it on the show. You can catch us on our website, channelstv.com. I'm Ijoma Onyato. Thank you for watching, and let's do this again some other time.